Sergeant, will you begin your recordings? Recording to the computer started. Recording to cloud. Thank you. Good morning and welcome to today's New York City Council remote hearing on the subcommittee on landmarks, public sighting and disposition. At this time, at all panelists, please turn on your videos. Thank you. To minimize disruption, please place all electronic devices to vibrate or silent mode. Thank you. If you wish to submit testimony, you may do so at land use testimony at council.nyc. I repeat, land use testimony at council.nyc. Chair Riley, we're ready to begin. Good morning. I am Councilmember Kevin Riley, Chair of the Subcommittee on Landmarks, Public Sightings, and Dispositions. I'm joined today by my colleagues, Councilmember Kuhl and Councilmember Traeger. We will vote to approve with modifications, LU numbers 889 to 893, Cooper Park Commons. These applications request approval of a proposed amendment of the zoning map changing an R6 district to an R7-2 slash C2-4 district. An amendment of Appendix F of the zoning resolution to designate a mandatory exclusionary housing area. The grant of a special permit pursuant to Section 74-743A2 of the zoning resolution to modify height and setback requirements, the minimum distance between buildings with a large scale general development, the designation of property located at 288 Jackson Avenue, Block 2885, Lot 1, as an urban development, as an urban development action area, an urban development action area project for such area and the district. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Councilman. Thank you, Councilman. And the disposition of such property to a developer selected by HPD and the modifications of a prior disposition of city owned property located at 20 Kingsland Avenue, block 2080, excuse me, 2885, lot 10, to change the permitted community facility used for a healthcare facility to use to general community facility uses. These actions will facilitate the redevelopment of the 4.5 acre former Greenpoint Hospital campus in East Williamsburg into Cooper Park Commons, a mixed use complex with the two new buildings and the enlargement of the two of the historic former hospital buildings provided approximately 553 units of affordable and senior housing, community facility uses, and light retail and the on-site replacement of the 200-bed Kleeman Residence Homeless Shelter. The council's modifications will remove the MIH option two and add the deep affordability option and revise the design of the public, the public accessible area to reduce parking and vehicle driveway areas and increase open space and pedestrian safety. The project is located in the district represented by Councilmember Reynoso. We will vote to approve the modification LU numbers 848 to 851 related to the Glenmore Manor project submitted by the Department of Housing Preservation and Development. These applications request approval of amendment to zoning map sections 17C and 17D, changing from an R6 district to an R7A-C2-4 district and changing from an R6 district to an, R to an R7D slash C2-4 district. Amendment of the zoning resolution modifying Appendix F to designate a mandatory exclusionary housing area, designation of an urban development action area, approval of an urban development action area project, for such area and approval of the disposition of property located at 305-309 Mother Gaston Boulevard, 46-64 Christopher Ave, and 111-117 Glenmore Avenue to a developer of HPD's choosing, and approval of the third amendment to the Brownsville Second Urban Renewal Plan to change the designation of Site 11B from public institutional use to residential use. 
The proposed actions will facilitate the development of Glenmore Manor, an 11 story mixed use building with approximately 232 affordable housing units and 8,600 square feet of commercial and community space as an entrepreneurial hub for the local business and nonprofit incumbation. We will vote to modify the application by striking MIH option two and adding the deep affordability MIH option. The project site is located in the Brooklyn Council District represented by council member Dharma Diaz. We will also vote to approve LU847, the TM, the TMN 1002 West Harlem Residence UDAP and Article 11 tax exemption submitted by the Department of Housing Preservation and the Development Pursuant Section 693 and 694 of the General Municipal Law and Article 11 of the Private Housing Finance Law. The application seeks waiver of the designation requirements of the Section 197-C and 197-D of the Charter and Approval of the Urban Development Action Area Project and approval of the exemption from the real property taxation for property located at 101 West 141st Street, AKA 621-23 Lenox Avenue and 121-123 West 144th Street and located in the Manhattan District represented by Council Member Perkins. And before we vote, I would like to uh, announce we have been joined by Council Member Barron and Council Member Reynoso, and I would like to allow Council Member Reynoso some time uh, to give some more remarks on the Cooper Towns project. Council Member Reynoso. Thank you, Council Member Riley. Chair Riley, I appreciate the time. Uh, just wanna say uh, how grateful um, I am to get to this point here today. Uh, we've been fighting for over 40 years to see the former Greenpoint Hospital um, be rebuilt into affordable housing. Um, it's unfortunate that it took 40 years to finally move forward with a plan that the community was comfortable with, but I'm glad that we are here. And I want to be clear that we're building over 700 units of housing or 500 units of housing, of which 200 will be um, a shelter with 200 beds um, in on site uh, to replace the current shelter that is there we'll be building 500 units of housing of which a significant amount will go to formerly homeless um, folks as well. Um, so I just wanna make sure that we're clear that uh, we're protecting the homeless uh, services that exist there, but also making it so that uh, formerly or homeless individuals can find homes in the supportive housing that we're building on site. Um, the project is 100% affordable um, all below 80% AMI with numbers reaching 60 and 40% uh, AMI in this project. Um, so, uh, families, um, it's being, it's a co-project or a private public partnership, which now I'm not a big fan of, but if, it, you know, if this administration and previous ones feel that that's what they need to do to build housing, sure, St. Nick's Alliance is uh, one of the co-developers on this project. They're also an, uh, Offices are adjacent to this project. They've been doing work in North Brooklyn for a significant amount of time. Um, again, uh, uh, there's a commitment to half a million dollars to a park across the street, um, Cooper Park, actual Cooper Park um, across the street. There's support happening for Cooper Park houses um, that is also adjacent to this. Um, when we talk about a project that really encompasses everything that we're looking for um, in Greg, which was uh, the organization that came up from the shutdown of Greenpoint Hospital and the need to develop it, um, this really speaks to that. Um, so I'm hoping uh, that my colleagues can vote yes on this project. Um, it's been a long time coming. Um, and again, happy to be here. And thank you so much, Chair Riley, for uh, giving me the opportunity to speak on it. Thank you, Councilmember Reynoso, for continuing to fight for your community. I'm really excited about this project. It's going to be a beautiful project. I'm looking forward uh, to the ribbon cutting uh, because it's going to be amazing. Uh, we will now vote to approve LU 847 TMN 1002 West Holland Renaissance and to approve with modifications LU num numbers 848, 849, 850, 851, 889, 890, 891, 892, and 893. Council, please call the roll. 
Riley. I don't know. Who? I will. I don't know. Baron. My permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Thank you. Uh, I want to just comment briefly on the uh, Cooper Park project. Um, I did sit in during that presentation to land use and realize that this has been a long time coming and I compliment the council member Reynoso for the work that he's done. And I'm disappointed that they weren't able to uh, incorporate the 200 formally, the 200 shelter beds directly into the project and guarantee that those 200 uh, units would no longer be shelter units located wherever, but would be provisions for people within the development that it would eliminate, in fact, shelter units. Uh, it was a model that we were able to develop with help homes in my district. And I'm hoping that other people will be able to work with developers to bring that as a reality. I know we always need to provide shelter with an obligation of the city. I think until we find ways to really make sure that we eliminate units, uh, we're going to continue to have a burgeoning problem. Uh, but I do want to vote aye on all, and I will be abstaining on LU 847. I just need to think a little deeper on that, but uh, thank you. Trigger. Abstaining aye. on 847. Noted. I'm sorry, I wanted to be clear. I'm abstaining. I'm voting aye on all, and I'm abstaining on LU 847. Noted. Thank you. Traeger. Aye. By a vote of four in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and zero abstentions, LUs 848 through 851 and 889 through 893 are recommended with modifications and LU 847 is by a vote of uh, three in the affirmative with one abstention is recommended to the full land use committee and the vote will be held open for council member Miller when he arrives. Thank you council. I now recognize council to explain today's hearing procedures. Thank you, Chair Riley. I'm Jeffrey Campania, counsel to this subcommittee. Members of the public who wish to testify were asked to register for today's hearing. If you registered to testify and are not yet signed into Zoom, please sign in now and remain signed in until you have testified. If you wish to testify and have not registered, please go to www.council.nyc.gov slash land use to sign up now. If you're not planning to testify on today's items, please watch the hearing on the New York City Council website. All people testifying before the subcommittee will be on mute until they are recognized to testify. Please confirm that your mic is unmuted before you begin speaking. Public testimony will be limited to two minutes per witness. If you have written testimony you would like the, sub the subcommittee to consider in addition to or in lieu of appearing before the subcommittee, or if you require an accessible version of a presentation given at today's meeting, please email landusetestimony at council.nyc.gov. Please indicate the LU number or project name in the subject line of the email. During the hearing, council members who would like to ask questions should use the Zoom raise hand function. The raise hand button should appear at the bottom of the participant panel. I will announce council members who have questions in the order they raise their hands. Witnesses are reminded to remain in the meeting until they are excused by the chair. Lastly, there may be extended pauses if we encounter technical problems. We ask that you please be patient as we work through these issues. Chair Riley will now continue with today's agenda. Thank you, Council. Our first public hearing today will be on LU numbers 897 and 898 for the Wind Powers Project. The Department of Housing Preservation requests approval of the designation of an Urban Development Action Area and an Urban Development Action Area Project for such area and disposition of a city-owned property located at 346 Powers Avenue block 2572, lot six, in the Bronx to a developer of HPD's choosing. HPD also seeks approval of a special permit 
pursuant to section 74-903 of the New York City Zoning Resolution to modify the requirements of the ZR section 24-111 to allow an increase in permitted floor area rate ratio for use group three nonprofit use with sleeping accommodations for 2.43 FAR to 2. I mean to 4.8 FAR. These actions will facilitate the, the redevelopment of a city-owned site with two new community facility buildings, including a permanent supporting housing facility containing 221 units for families with children and an off-site daycare center and a new homeless shelter building with 95 units. This project is located within the Bronx Council District represented by Council Member Ayala. Presenting for the applicants, we have Ted Weinstein on behalf of HPD. We have former City Council Speaker Christine Quinn on B, Win Chief Executive Officer. 212695. No, no. Uh, excuse me, Chair Riley. Uh, Christine Quinn will not be here. Okay, okay. And Megan Linhain for Women in Need, Erin Drinkwater for the Department of Social Services, and Christine Cholsom, excuse me if I mispronounce your name, for a Lever Consultant, LLC, and Alan Mohaydam for Urban Arch Architectural in Initiatives. Council, please administer the affirmation. Please raise your, raise your right hands and in turn state your names. Please unmute yourself. Please accept the invitation to unmute. And when you're unmuted, please raise your right hands and in turn uh, state your names. Megan Lenahan. Aaron Drinkwater. Alan Mogadam. Christine Chisholm. Ted. Ted Weinstein. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before the subcommittee and an answer to all council member questions? I do. I do. I do. Thank you to all the applicants. You may begin your presentation. Good morning, Chair Riley, council members. Uh, my name is Ted Weinstein. I am director of Bronx Planning for HPD. Uh, this morning, I will just very briefly explain the basics of this proposed project um, and then turn it over to the wind development team uh, to talk more about themselves and about uh, the details of the project. This is a city owned property that uh, is located on Powers Avenue. Um, it is currently, part of it is currently occupied by a building which is used as a transitional shelter operated by WIND through a contract with DHS. The other part of the property is undeveloped. Uh, because the building that is used as a shelter uh, is an old building, was not originally planned for that use. The proposal here is to, on the undeveloped part of the property to build a new, uh, more modern, efficient, serviceable shelter building. Um, and then when that is completed, to demolish the existing shelter building. And then at that location, uh build a permanent housing, supportive housing building. Um, and that'll provide uh, better um, support services, both for the people in the shelter and then permanent housing and services for the people in the new building as well. Um, the uh, chair already read the actions that would be involved here. Um, so at this point, I will turn it over to Wynn to talk about uh, themselves and the details of the project. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, first of all, I just want to apologize for Christine Quinn not being able to join us this morning. Um, she has some complications from an emergency surgery that she had a few weeks ago that needed to be attended to, and unfortunately, it was unavoidable. Um, so she sends her regrets, but very much appreciate um, the opportunity to speak with you all here today. Uh, just some background on Wynn. Wynn is the largest provider of shelter and supportive housing to families experiencing homelessness in New York City. Um, of the roughly 53,000 people in the city shelter system, um, about 65% of those are families with children. Um, and just some history with us on this site. So Wynn began operating this site um, as an emergency provision during Hurricane Sandy. 
Um, it was originally the city's intake center path, um, and we've been operating it as a shelter um, since 2012. So as Ted mentioned, we're really excited about this project because it will allow us to have um, both a purpose-built shelter, um, so really have the space that will allow us to provide the services that we offer, um, and additionally, um, some, some much needed supportive housing units um, additionally on the site. So at Wynn, uh, we believe in a holistic model um, that includes um, income building for the more than 50% of our work eligible moms who enter shelter working, um, childcare and recreation for all of our children are on site that includes a STEAM based camp win programming during all school breaks and in the summertime. Um, and also uh, on site social workers, case managers, um, you know, kind of all of the provisions that you would expect from the city council, uh, excuse me, from a, uh, a, so a transitional housing facility. Um, the other thing I just wanted to mention is that we find that between 30 and 40% of our clients uh, benefit from exiting into supportive housing. Um, it's the most stable means of exit for those families. So having this additional supportive housing capacity will be extremely helpful in uh, making sure that these families remain stably and independently housed um, for the foreseeable future. Um, just moving on to some specifics about the site. Um, Christine, I don't know if you were gonna share the presentation that we have. Sorry, I wasn't, I was, thank you, I thought so. Perfect. Great, so if we can just skip ahead to slide four. Great, so as we've mentioned, um, this site is located at 346 Powers Avenue. Um, the new transitional housing will contain 95 units replacing the existing 78, so roughly the same size. Um, and the second building with phase two of the project will contain 223 units of permanent affordable and supportive housing for families. Um, slide five will show you an aerial view of the current site, um, and you'll see that it's outlined in red there. Um, as I mentioned, the project will be built in two phases. Phase one will take place on the current parking lot, which will be the construction of the transitional housing building um, to replace the existing transitional housing building so that we don't lose any capacity of those, those shelter units. Um, and then phase two will be the demolishing of the existing transitional site so that the supportive and affordable building can be built. Um, slide six. We'll show you a rendering of the full project. Um, the, fill, the building in the foreground will be the new transitional housing building. This, as I mentioned, will be a modern purpose-built shelter for families with children um, that will have the adequate space for all of the on-site services that we provide. Um, the building in the background is a permanent housing building. The street wall for both buildings will be six stories and roughly match the height of the buildings um, in the surrounding neighborhood. And after a setback, the transitional housing rises to 11 stories and the permanent housing building rises to eight stories. If we can flip to slide seven. Um, as I mentioned during phase one, um, it will be the purpose-built shelter for our 95 units of transitional housing with varying configurations to serve different size families. Um, all of our sites have community rooms on site um, as well as childcare facilities. They all include 24 hour security um, and open space um, in, by way of a playground and green space for community use. Um, as the DSS can speak to a little bit more, um, we do prioritize families from the local area uh, when looking for um, families to come into our transitional housing capacity. Um, and then if we could flip to slide eight. So this is the rendering of the permanent housing building to be built during phase two. Um, the buildings will create an improved streetscape and enhance safety with our outdoor lighting and 24 hour security, as I mentioned. Um, the street walls are set back from the property at various distances to create visual interest along the sidewalks and provide opportunities for ample landscaping in front of the building and privacy for the first floor residents. The buildings will meet enterprise green community standards and will have solar panels on the roof. Um, for the permanent support and supportive housing on slide nine, um, it'll be approximately 223 units 
133 of which will be supportive housing units and 88 units will be available through the lottery system as affordable units to the community. There'll be two super units. Um, and as I mentioned, we will be doing community preference for the, uh, the affordable units. Um, on slide 10, just to share a breakdown of what these units, the configuration will be, there'll be 12 studio apartments, 82 one bedrooms, 104 two bedrooms, 23 three bedrooms um, for a total of 223, including the super units. Um, and this is so that we'll be able to serve a variety of family sizes and configurations in, in this setup. Um, on slide 11, uh, just to share that both the permanent housing building will also include a child care center for both our residents and the, which will be open to the community. Um, there is outdoor space, which will also be open to the community and then a seven floor terrace, which will be for our residents. Um, in permanent housing, in the supportive housing side of it, we do have social services on site um, and we'll actively seek to form a community and tenant advisory board. Uh, one other thing that I just wanna note is that um, with these projects, we always look to um, involve as much as the community as possible. So to include through local uh, hiring opportunities, uh, we recently opened a, a facility in Coney Island in Council Member Traeger's district. Um, and due to a great partnership with him and his office, we're able to secure 34% um, of our staff are, are from that local area. Um, and again, that was through working with the council member's office and the local workforce one center there. Um, but that's something that Wynn always tries to do with our projects and we'd be very excited to, to have the opportunity to do here as well. Um, slide 12, we'll just give a, a little bit of a, an insight into what the ground floor will look like. Um, so the green area is the transitional housing facility and the yellow area is the permanent and supportive facility. Um, you'll see that both have um, outdoor space um, and their own daycare space, which will, has access to the outdoors as well. Um, each lobby will have its own security desk and main areas for the tenants uh, to connect directly with the, the large courtyard. Um, computer room and, and computer lab are also provided on the first floor of, of both facilities. Um, and as I mentioned, the daycares that will be open to the public, um, as well as our as well as our tenants, excuse me, is um, located on the 142nd Street side. Um, of the facility and also has its own outdoor space. On slide 13, um, just some, some highlights of, of what we're aiming for for this project is really the thoughtful design, um, beautiful, well-maintained properties. As I mentioned, the local hiring for operations and for construction of the project, um, increased lighting and security around the facility um, and both the community room and daycare center, which will be open for community use as well. Um, thank you again for, for the time and the opportunity to speak with you this morning, um, and we'd be happy to take any questions that anyone might have. Thank you, Megan. Uh, just two questions real quick. Uh, the Bronx Community Board 1 noted that shelters continue to be cited disproportionately in low, in low to moderate income neighborhoods. Could you speak to HPD's approach to citing such projects and describe why this location specifically is well suited for shelter and supportive housing proposed? Yes, we do in terms of um, uh, our citing through our various programs, we do see what else is in the area there, what is needed, um, but also what the opportunities are, what is possible. Um, in this particular case, there, again, there is an existing shelter there. Um, and so this really creates an opportunity um, because also the part of the property that's vacant undeveloped to not only improve uh, the services for the people in the shelter, but then provide uh, through the same operator, uh, the new permanent housing building itself. So it's really that this location really just presented an opportunity that doesn't exist in many places. Thank you, Ted. And I didn't see anything on the AMI uh, mixtures. Can you go into what the AMIs will be? Okay, we're in the permanent housing in the uh, supportive housing building. Um, it would be a range. Uh, the distribution, because that's a second phase, so we're still some time away from actually finalizing some of the details of that building, but the, it would definitely be a range 
from 30% AMI to perhaps the, uh, maybe up to 80% AMI. Again, the distribution hasn't been worked out yet. Most of the units would be less than 60%, between 30 and 60% of AMI. Thank you. Okay, I don't see any council uh, members with any questions, so uh, that'll be it for me. Thank you all to, to all the panels, um, and you may be excused. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Are there any members of the public who wish to testify on the wind project, wind powers project? There Council? are no, there are no members of the public signed up to testify on this item. Seeing no other members of the public who wish to testify on this, these items, the public hearing on LU numbers 897 and 898 are now closed and the items are laid over. The next, the next public hearing on LU number 881 related to lot, Las Raices project submitted by the Department of Housing Preservation and Development pursuant to section 197-C of the New York City Charter. This application requests approval of the disposition of city-owned property located at 303 East 102, 102nd Street, Block 1674, Lot 104, 338 East 117th Street, Block 167. 88 lot 34 505-507 East 118th Street block 1815 lots 5 and 6 1761-1763 Park Avenue block 1771 lots 1 and 2 this disposition approval will facilitate the development and construction of four new affordable rental developments containing approximately 81 affordable dwelling units and community facility space in the district represented by council member Perkins and Ayala. Presented for the applicants, we have Joy Hung, Ariel Goldberg and Felipe Cortez from HPD, Chris Cirillo on behalf of Ascendance Neighborhood Development Corporation and Jonathan Cruz for MDG Development Management Construction. I now ask that these witnesses will be unmuted and that council administer the affirmation. Thank you, council member Riley and the, uh, council members. Oh. Um, you have to wait. Uh, please okay. raise your hands and state your names in order. Could all the applicants please raise your right hands and state your names? Joan. Felipe Cortez. Ariel Joan. Goldberg. Joan Huang. Chris Cirillo. Jonathan Cruz. Thank you. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before the subcommittee and an answer to all subcommittee member questions? I do. Yes, I do. I, I do. Thank you. You may begin your presentation. Thank you, Council Member Riley. Uh, so I believe we have a, a PowerPoint. Thank you so much. So thank you, Council Members, for the opportunity to present uh, the Last Races Project. Uh, my name is Zhong Huang. Um, the borough planner from HPD. I joined by my HPD's corner uh, colleagues, uh, Felipe Cortez, uh, Deputy Director of Manhattan Planning, Ariel uh, Goebers, Director of Land Use and the Policy, and our development partners, Ascendant Neighborhood Development and MDG Development Management Constructions. Next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, Las Races is scattered site projects, a total of four sites throughout the East Harlem area. So you can see this four site in the uh, map on the slide too. Uh, the proposed development uh, will provide approximately uh, 83 affordable rental units, including a green roof and a ground floor community facility space. Uh, the land use action needed to facilitate this development is a disposition of a city-owned land. 
In uh, 2014, HPD released a citywide request for qualification for the uh, night hub and the neighborhood construction program to develop the uh, affordable housing development projects on small scattered uh, city owned sites. Uh, the development team was selected in uh, 2018. Uh, the project was certified on May 17, 2021, and the CPC vote on the project on October 6, 2021. So we are here uh, today to seek your support and, uh, on this project. Now uh, I will turn the presentation over to our development team uh, for the further detail of the project. Good morning, uh, Chair Riley and uh, council members. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here this morning to present our proposal for the Las Reyesas project. Uh, again, my name is Chris Cirillo. Uh, I'm the executive director of Ascendant Neighborhood Development Corporation. We are a nonprofit affordable housing and community development corporation based in East Harlem. Um, we currently own and manage 28 affordable rental apartment buildings with close to 700 apartments. Um, we've been serving the East Harlem and Central Harlem communities since 1988. Uh, we're happy to be partnered with MDG Design and Construction, one of the leading for-profit uh, affordable housing developers and managers uh, in New York City. Uh, and my colleague uh, from MDG, Jonathan Cruz, will be speaking a little bit later about some of the aspects of the project. Um, we have four sites uh, that are part of the Las Raices project, and so we'll quickly run through them and talk a little bit more about the details uh, of each of them as we go. Can I have the next slide, please? Uh, so as Joan noted, uh, the overall Las Raices project has a total of 83 uh, affordable rental apartments. Um, and this chart shows you uh, site by site, uh, the breakdown of uh, apartment sizes. Uh, we have a mix of studio, one bedroom, two bedroom, and three bedroom apartments across the four sites. Um, and we also have a mix of affordability levels uh, we have apartments set aside for uh, households that are exiting the shelter system, formerly homeless, uh, extremely low income, very low income, uh, and low income apartments at 30%, 40%, 50%, 60%, and 80% of area median income. And there are two super units uh, in the project as well. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so I'm going to quickly run through the four sites that are included. Uh, site one is at 303 East 102nd Street between uh, 2nd Avenue and 1st Avenue. Uh, this is currently a vacant city-owned property. Uh, we're proposing a new infill building, five stories uh, with six apartments, a mix in this building of studios and two bedrooms. Um, there, this is one of two sites in the overall Las Reyes project that has ground floor community facility space. Um, residents will have access to an on-site laundry room uh, and the building will feature a green roof. I should also mention that all four of the buildings will be meeting enterprise green communities uh, uh, sustainability standards as well. Next slide, please. Uh, the second site is another small uh, currently vacant city owned site on uh, at 3, 338 East 117th Street between uh, 1st Avenue and uh, 2nd Avenue. Um, this is a proposed five story infill building uh, with seven apartments. Uh, here we have a mix of studio, one bedroom, and three bedroom apartments. Um, again, residents will have access to on site laundry. This building will also feature a landscaped rear yard that'll be accessible to all residents of the building. Um, next slide, please. Uh, the third site in the cluster is located at 505 East 118th Street. Uh, this is located just east of Pleasant Avenue. Um, this uh, is a proposed six story uh, apartment building with a total of 18 apartments, a mix of studios, one bedrooms, two bedrooms, and three bedrooms. Uh, again, uh, uh, laundry room available for all uh, residents of the building to, to use. This building also will feature a landscape rear yard accessible for residents of the building and a green roof. Next slide, please. Um, still on 118th Street, um, this is one of two sites in the cluster uh, that are currently temporarily occupied by portions of existing community gardens. 
Uh, and so what you see on the screen is an aerial view of uh, the outline of the Pleasant Village Community Garden. Uh, the portion that is shaded green is the permanent garden under the Department of Parks and Recreation jurisdiction. And the portion that's in brown is under HPD jurisdiction and under a temporary use uh, for community uh, garden purposes. And that's the portion uh, where the uh, project uh, proposed for 118th Street will be developed. Um, next slide, please. Uh, and the final uh, site of the four sites in this uh, project is located at 1761 Park Avenue at the northeast corner of 122nd Street. Um, this is the largest proposed project in the cluster. Uh, it'll be a 14 story apartment building with 52 apartments, a mix of studios, one bedrooms and two bedrooms. Um, this is the second site in the cluster that also features community facility space. Um, as part of the rezoning um, that East Harlem had uh, a few years ago, uh, Park Avenue uh, along this section was upzoned and new zoning requirements were put into place requiring commercial or community facility uses at the lower floors of buildings uh, fronting onto Park Avenue where the Park Avenue viaduct uh, is located. So the first two floors of this building are proposed as uh, community facility space. We haven't yet selected uh, the uh, tenants for this space or the space on 102nd Street uh, but we've been uh, speaking with Community Board 11 and other stakeholders um, to solicit ideas for potential tenants for these spaces. Um, this uh, building will feature a laundry room accessible to all the residents on the roof, and that will open out onto a landscape roof terrace accessible for uh, residents of the building. Next slide, please. Um, and this is the second site in the cluster that is also being developed on a site that's currently temporarily used as a community garden. Um, so in this aerial view, uh, you see outlined in red the entire site. Uh, the portion shaded in green is the permanent uh, Jackie Robinson Garden under Parks Department jurisdiction. And the portion shaded in brown is the development site for the new building that is under HPD jurisdiction. Next site, uh, next slide, excuse me. Um, so one of the things that Ascendant has been incorporating into all of our existing buildings and our, our projects in our development pipeline um, is a public art initiative. And we are uh, working with a locally based, East Harlem based nonprofit organization uh, called Thrive Collective that works with young people in the neighborhood and in, in neighborhood schools um, to develop and implement uh, murals and other public art and so we're gonna be working with Thrive across all four of the sites and with uh, nearby uh, schools to develop a public art program for all four of the sites. Next slide. Um, and I'm gonna turn it over here to uh, Jonathan Cruz from MDG, who will speak a little bit about our local hiring plans and MWBE commitments on the project. Great, thank you very much, Chris, and good morning. Uh, Chair Riley and the city council members, thank you for having us on today. I just wanted to echo what Chris has been saying. We're very excited to be working on this project and um, our commitment to affordable housing is gonna continue to um, show itself through the development of Las Reyes. But I also wanted to close out our presentation speaking to our commitments for MWBE involvement and local hiring and local training. So specifically, MDG is working on our third NYCHA RAD conversion right now in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, um, after completing two previous ones in the city. And we have a robust uh, Section 3 local training and local hiring plan. And the, those principles that we were able to implement on those projects, I think, are very relevant for the same approach we want to take for uh, training locally for the OSHA 40 and also hiring as many community members as possible as part of the uh, development of Las Reyes. So we're gonna be implementing those same principles that made us successful on our NYCHA projects, um, as well as the other projects we closed with HPD in East Harlem, which we show on the slide on the screen. Um, we also want to uh, emphasize that we have a demonstrated track record of exceeding our MWB Eagles um, through our relationships with subcontractors that we worked on on our NYCHA projects, HPD projects, or NYS HCR projects, and we're going to com commit to also exceeding the MWBE targets for uh, Las Reyes East Harlem. Um, and we all are also um, 
committing to, like Chris said, working with the community, with um, working with housing ambassadors um, to also make sure the majority of the uh, individuals that are able to apply um, for this in East, in East Harlem are able to apply for residency at Las Reyes when it's, it is completed. Um, so uh, we are very excited about this project and we look to continue to uh, our track record of um, MWBE and local hiring success with this project. And with that, I think that brings us to the end of the presentation. So I'll hand it back to Chris Cirillo of Ascended. Um, next slide, please. Um, so that does conclude our presentation today. Um, as Joe noted, uh, we started the ULERP for this project in May. Um, even before ULERP, we met multiple times with Community Board 11. Um, and during ULERP received uh, unanimous support from the community board. Uh, we've also received the support of the borough president um, and the city planning commission. And we look forward to answering any questions um, that the chair and council members uh, may have about the project. Thank you. Thank you to the Las Races team for, for that presentation. Uh, just a few questions I have. Uh, a high proportion of the units in these buildings are studios and one bedrooms. Uh, how do those unit sizes align with housing needs in the neighborhood? Um, thank you for the question. Uh, we, uh, as you can tell from the sites, they are uh, rather small. And um, so it has been a challenge to try to develop layouts that work um, as well as to create as many affordable apartments as we can, given the size constraints of the sites that we're working with. Um, you know, we've, we've tried our best to incorporate as many larger size apartments as possible. Um, it's definitely a concern that has been raised um, in the neighborhood generally um, during the neighborhood planning process that Ascendant participated in a few years back um, and with uh, this project and other projects that we have in our pipeline. And we've, you know, committed to do our best to, to create and design as many larger size apartments as we can. Um, in this one, we've looked at opportunities to potentially um, shift the unit mix a bit. Um, unfortunately, it's challenging with the financing and the size of the sites to really squeeze in any more larger size apartments without losing a significant number of overall apartments in the project. Um, but it's definitely a concern that we're aware of and we're trying to address uh, as best we can in this project and in other projects that we're developing in the neighborhood. Is any of the community garden space that's being displaced going to be relocated anywhere else? Hi, um, this is Eric Goldberg and I can address that. Um, we, so as Chris said, um, both community gardens had what are called essentially parks protected portions. Those existed um, prior to the HPD portions. The HPD portions were offered uh, temporarily as expansion sites um, until development was ready to proceed. Both gardens were offered relocation sites and neither garden accepted the relocation sites that were offered. They did not respond. Okay. And do we have a sense of what type of public art will be included on the facades? Um, we are still at the very beginning stages of developing the public art program here. We've been working with Thrive uh, on a couple of other of our existing buildings, and we're uh, looking at doing um, uh, similar murals. Uh, they have done a lot of work in East Harlem and around the city, um, and they usually partner with uh, uh, locally based schools. Um, and the designs are kind of generated from what the young people in those uh, schools want to see and, and how they uh, kind of view their neighborhood and what, um, what things they want to feature in the artwork. So we're looking forward to that. Um, one thing I didn't mention is um, part of the reason that we're um, looking at, especially um, on the 118th Street building and the 117th Street building, um, those two sites are located within the floodplain. And so because of that, uh, we don't have basements in those buildings. We have some ground floor mechanical space that uh, uh, we have to accommodate uh, in order to raise it up out of the flood zones. And so that's creating a situation where we can't have apartments um, on parts of the ground floors of those buildings. So it, it creates some blank walls. And we thought that one way that we could address that through the design of the buildings 
was to incorporate spaces for public art that would help to enliven and enrich the streetscape. So um, that's part of it, um, but also uh, we're trying to uh, kind of expand our public art portfolio across our whole, uh, our, all of our buildings. Thank you. Thank you, Las Races, for your testimony. Uh, I don't see any council member um, with any questions, so this panel may be excused, and you all enjoy the rest of your week, okay? Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You so much. Right Thank you so much. Thank you. No problem. Council, do we have any members of the public who wish to testify on this project? There are no members of the public signed up to testify on this item. Seeing no other members of the public who wish to testify on this item, the public hearing on LUA81 is now closed and the item is laid over. That concludes today's business. I remind you that if you have written testimony on today's items, you may submit it to land use testimony at council.nyc. Excuse me, you have to close the vote. Oh, so sorry. I forgot Council Member Miller to show up. So you can just say also, that you close can we close the vote on the, the, the vote is now closed uh, as stated earlier with the vote standing as uh, stated earlier. Thank you, Council. That concludes today's business. I remind you that if you have written testimony on today's items, you may submit it to land use testimony at council.nyc.gov. Please indicate the LU number or the project name in the subject heading. I would like to thank the applicants, members of the public, my colleagues, subcommittee council, land use staff, and the sergeant at arms for participating in today's hearing. This meeting is hereby adjourned. Thank you.